That is a very sobering number. Welcome back to my channel. For anyone that doesn't know me, I'm Josh, the driving instructor, and it's lovely to have you here. People always focus on how much you make as a driving instructor. No one actually ever really talks about what it costs to be a driving instructor. So today, I really want to focus on that, talk about what's coming out. Sometimes I get people making statements like, whoa, I charge you 30 pound an hour. You must be, you must be loaded. What'd you spend all your money on? You know, like I've got money to spend spare after the bills come out. Um, <laughs> But the fact of the matter is, if it was £30 an hour for eight hours straight, then yes, I'd be, you know, doing very, very well. Unfortunately, it's not like that. It's just not, you know, you're not going to get that. Let's have a look at the numbers anyway. And it's, it's actually quite a bit of, bit of a wake up call for me as well, to be honest, because I don't like looking at these numbers. You know, what you've got to remember is there's, there's 30 minutes probably between each lesson to get from one lesson to the next. So you're not really charging £30 an hour. You're charging more like, 30 pounds for an hour and a half. Then you've got lunch breaks on top. And believe me, you do need a lunch break as a driving instructor because it's tiring mentally, not physically, but mentally, which is even worse because I get home and I haven't even lost any weight because I've not done anything. I'm just knackered. You need toilet breaks and you do need to fit those in. It is a driving instructor's worst nemesis, finding a toilet. And no one accounts for the holiday pay or lack of sick pay that you'd get with an employer or maybe even a pension. So let's have a look. I could have just given you any old numbers, but I'm actually giving you the numbers I have out of my bank account. So you've got a realistic figure. So first we're gonna look at the must have expenses. Pretty obvious driving instructor, you're going to need a car. I'll be honest with you, when I got my car, it was a bit of a rush job. I just went for the, the quickest option with the lowest upfront cost, the lowest monthly cost because it was new, knew it was going to be tax deductible. I didn't have a lot of money for my training in the first place. So it was just a bit of a rush job. I also wanted to make sure it was diesel, so the fuel cost everywhere was going to be reasonably low. They're also generally a little bit easier to drive, easier to get the, the, the bite, and less likely to stall in a diesel. So that's why I chose that. This particular car, my Peugeot 208, is actually tax free, road tax is free as well. And there's no green zone near me at the moment, so it doesn't really affect me for, for that either. No extra costs there. I actually went with a PCP plan. Uh, over three years. PCP, basically, it's, it's, I guess it's almost like hiring a car, but I pay a monthly fee over three years. Um, at the end of the three years, I can either pay a balloon payment and keep the car. You know, the balloon payment might be five, six K, um, or I can just give the keys back, walk away. Thank you very much. On my next car, I don't know if I'll be doing PCP again. There are other options, and I think there's actually a better option, but we'll talk about that in another video. So for the car, cost me £47 per week, £187 per month, and a whopping yearly total of £2,244. That is a bit of an eye-opener. The next must-have expense as a driving instructor, you need insurance, but not any old insurance, driving school insurance. So driving school insurance does have some extra perks, but unfortunately it does cost more than normal insurance and the normal no claims do not count. You have to have driving school, no claims, which means when you start, as a driving instructor, you start with zero, no claims. And when I was young and handsome, okay, maybe not young, uh, we'll start again. When I was in my early stages of becoming a driving instructor, I had zero, no claims. You know, I was getting quotes between 1,000 and 2,000 pounds, like a 17 year old passing a normal driving test, not a pretty figure at all. And you've got to build those no claims up, but it does start to drop off reasonably quickly, which is very nice. Now the driving school insurance does give a few extra perks, as I mentioned before. Basically, I can drive anyone's car as long as it has insurance. I will only be third party policy on there, but with their permission, I can drive anyone's car, which means I can take students out in their own car and I'm still partially insured on it. So I can grab the wheel and things like that. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do that which would be a little bit scary for everyone else out there on the road. Any license holder can also drive my car. They are insured to drive my car. And anyone without a license, as long as they have a provisional license and they're over the age of 17, they can drive my car, providing I am in the car with them. On top of this, I get a courtesy car if there was an incident. I have also got legal cover and there's some other bits that I'm not going to bore you with because I can't really remember. <laughs> so. A few years down the line, my insurance has dropped slightly now, which is nice. So I'm currently paying £20 per week, which is £80 per month, and still a whopping £960 per year. 
ouch. Next must have as a driving instructor, I'm in the car every day, bouncing around up the curbs, down the curbs sometimes. No, we try and avoid curbs as much as possible, but even so, mistakes do happen and the car's on the road for 12 hours some days. So Big Bertha does get a bit of jib. And because of that, she needs a bit of extra TLC. On top of that, my car's used for driving tests. And on a driving test, you're not allowed to have any warning lights on the dashboard. Because if you have a warning light, it suggests there's something wrong with the vehicle and it can't be used for the driving test. So it's got to be kept in good nick. Which means I have to make sure it goes for service probably twice a year, which just gives it the one over, changes any oil filters, anything that needs changing fix. I'm not a mechanic, so I don't know exactly what they do, but they make sure the car's working correctly and safely, which is all I need. This does, however, cost a pretty penny at an average of around £150 per service, depending on the type of service. So for this, I have to pay £6.25 per week, which is £25 per month, which is on average around £300 per year for two services. Next that no one talks about is the driving instructor badge, the big ADI badge. Now this bad boy is your golden Willy Wonka ticket as a driving instructor. It is illegal to teach lessons without having this badge. So you, you've got to have it. You've got to have it actually present in the car anytime you're doing lessons. In case the police stop you or anyone else stops you, you've got the badge to show that you are a driving instructor. For this badge, however, you are held accountable as a driving instructor and it must be renewed every four years. On top of this, a driving instructor must sit a standards check between every two years and every four years, depending on what grade they get. It's a bit like a university exam or school exam. If you get a grade A, you're excellent. If you get a grade B, you're just very good. But if you do get a grade A, you don't have another standards check for four years. If you get a grade B, you've got a standards check in approximately two years. To renew this badge, this costs £300 every four years. This is also there to keep driving instructors accountable for their teaching. It's to make sure that driving instructors are staying up to date with the road rules, staying up to date with the teaching style and the learning style, and making sure they're just not falling behind the times. Which is the right thing to do when charging people £30 an hour for their time. It's important that you are teaching them correctly and to the best of your ability. So, for the badge, it cost me £1.50 per week, which is £6.25 per month and £75 per year. Next must have is obviously the MOT, which everyone has. This is just to give the vehicle the one over, make sure everything is working correctly and safely, especially when you've got other people in the car. Learning is really, really important. Cost me around 90p a week, which is £3.75 a month and approximately £45 per year. So that's really the non-negotiable expense. Now I consider myself a, a bit of a quick teach when it comes to anything computer or anything money related. And I know if I really put my mind to it, I could sort my own books out, but I choose not to. Because I like reading as well. And I once read, if you want something done well, pay someone far smarter than you are to do it for you. So that's what I do. I pay an accountant to sort my books out every year. They know the ins and outs of driving instructor expenses. They know what I can claim for, what I can't claim for, the best methods of buying a car and anything else that I actually need. This does, however, cost me £6.25 per week, which is £25 per month and approximately £300 per year. Now I'm also part of a driving instructor union not being an employee of anyone else, there is no one else to support me, so I actually have to pay to be part of that. This provides me with constant up-to-date info for driving instructors, which again is really important. It's important I stay up-to-date with the driving tests, changes in the driving tests, changes in the driving training, in case it's something such as a lockdown and I need to know the specific rules. Covers me for legal cover, other bits and bobs that you're probably going to get bored with, so I'm going to leave them out. But this does cost me £1.50 per week, which is six twenty five dollars per month and £75 per year. Now, I've put this one in optional expenses, but to be honest, as a driving instructor, it's not really that optional. And that's cleaning the car. Now, if my driving instructor turned up to my house in a filthy car and I was paying £30 a lesson, I'm probably not going to think, wow, that's professional. My car's also used for driving tests, so it doesn't look very professional if I go to the driving test with a filthy car, and it just doesn't look very good. So for me, getting the car cleaned is a must, although you could do it yourself at home. Instead, I choose to go through a car wash, the drive through twice a week, £2.50 each. So that costs me £5 per week, which is £20 per month and £240 per year. Now, there are also going to be extra repairs on the car, such as changing the tires, uh, window wipers as well, when it's just on the road, so much 
they just wear out quicker. So at least two pairs of tires probably per year, which is around 200 pound. So I pay around four pound, 10 pence, give or take per week for tires and repairs, which works out about 16 pounds 60 per month and approximately 200 pounds per year. So tires are one of those things, the more you use, the quicker they're going to wear out. So this is going to vary depending on how busy you are. Final one's fuel. Now this is very difficult because again, the more you use the car, the more you're going to have to fill up. Also it depends on if it's petrol, diesel or whatever else. I myself filling up about 90 pounds per week, which is approximately 360 pounds per month, which is a whopping yearly total of 4,320 pounds. <laughs> now we're looking at the really long-term expenses. This is the difference between working for, for someone and working for yourself. You know, I haven't got a pension for instance, and nor do I actually save for a pension. Now, this is something I'm interested in. If you completely disagree with that, please get that in the comments below because I always um and ah, do I go with the pension? Do I not? I'm not too sure. What I am doing is I'm putting a little bit away towards a buy to let property because I just have more faith in, you know, having something there that I own instead of pension, which I'm not really in control of. So please get that in the comments. If you've got opinions on that, I'd love to hear it because I may be doing the wrong thing. For this, however, I do save £25 a week, which is £100 a month and £1,200 a year. It is slow going, but it's better than absolutely nothing. It's all I can afford at the moment. Another big separation from working for someone to working on your own is there's no holiday pay. Now, my wife loves to go on holiday once a year for two weeks. Somewhere abroad is nice. We didn't get to go last year, as I'm sure no one else did either, but I'd like to go again next year. Now, this is a bit of a double whammy for a driving instructor or anyone else that's self-employed, as you'll know, because not only am I not working to bring any money in, I'm also still having to pay the expenses for the car and everything else. So it is a bit of a, a double whammy. So to cover the expenses and everything else, I'd have to be bringing in around 1,200 pounds for two weeks, around 600 pounds a week in expenses, just to cover basic bills, things like that, the bare minimum. So I need to bring 1,200 pounds in a year, which means I need to save 120 pounds a month, which is 30 pounds per week. And that's not even paying for the holiday. Final problem with being self-employed is there is no sick pay. Ah, This means if I do something stupid, like trip over a step and break my ankle, which does happen, ask my wife, I can't then work for what, six to eight weeks? That's a long time to be not working with no money coming in. And I would essentially be screwed a lewd. So I try and prepare for this in the hopes I'll never need it by putting 50 pound a week away into the, the sick pay kitty. 50 pound a week, which is 200 pounds a month, which is 2,400 pounds per year. Now my hopes are I never need to use this for that at all. Instead, I'm gonna to get to 40 and buy myself a really nice car. But I'm still deciding on which car to, to get. So if you've got any help, I was thinking a Mustang, but I'm not too sure now. My, my friend popped around with an Audi R8 the other day. And that was, that was fit. My final optional expense, and I wouldn't live without this, is I pay for a driving instructor app. It's £10 per month, but I don't have to have any paper at all for people to, to look at their progress or keep up to date with where they actually are. It also has my diary on there, on my phone, along with a payment option so I can keep a record of every payment. And the worst one is when people block book and you don't know where they are up to with lessons and there's things like lockdown and whatever else. So it just automatically deducts that. It automatically reminds people of their lesson times. It's just so useful. I couldn't live without it now. No chance. So that cost me £2.50 per week, which is £10 per month, which is £120 per year. Best money I ever spent. So grand total without any fuel per week, we're looking at £169.97. Monthly, we're looking at £679.91 and, and per year, we're looking at a whopping £8,159. Ouch, that is a wake up call. That really stings, I feel a little bit. Meh. And that's not including the £4,000 I spend on fuel. If I included that, that'd be £12,000 a year. That really is astonishing because I'll be honest, I'm, I'm really bad for it. I love nothing more than to look through my diary and just count up the lessons and be like, yeah, that's that's how much I, I'm gonna earn this this week, no problem. But actually, I'm not. That's shocking. 169 pounds a week without fuel, it's just gone. You know, another 80 or 90 on top of that. 
per week. And that's really going to balance my, my sanity out and make sure I understand now why the money never adds up at the end of the week because I'm spending it on expenses. So that's really going to help me now in future understand that. If you think I missed anything out, get it in the comments below. Maybe you're a driving instructor and you think, well, he's, he's missed that out there. Get it in the comments. Um, if this helps you and you, you, you know, let me know, get it in there. Um, but really, if it helped you and you want to see anything, any more of this, make sure you click the like button, maybe subscribe and click the notifications. And well, that's, that's really it for today. I'll see you on the other side. Peace.